With the sheer amount of games that are fixated on having me raise a child, I wouldn't trust them not to poke holes in my condoms or secretly go off their birth control. I've raised enough wide-eyed innocent video game children to have an orphanage named in my honor after the trend of pairing a damaged and emotionally distant adult with a young child in need of protection and guidance in a world that wants them dead became the quickest way to build coverage of your IP. I felt that the last God of War game was the best of this particular trend of emotional manipulation since the series already had one of the most violent characters in games with a history of family issues, that being he killed all of them, forcing Kratos to outgrow his previous life of anger meth and jumping over tire fires for a far more interesting and relatable take on the concept with a dad who just wants to grill while restraining every murderous impulse or button mashing sex minigame whenever his son's around. But God of War 4 PS4, for lack of an accurate numerical name, wasn't the first attempt by the series to redeem Kratos through fatherhood. In fact, that's his entire origin. But with his daughter dead by his own hand before the first game ever began, and her only showing up at the very end of some of the older games, a mess with Kratos' head, and never possessed the emotional weight that you only get with a fragile human by your side for the journey. Since the original games were basically violent platformers, sidekicks just wouldn't work until they got around to cutting out the platforming in the fourth game. So we come to God of War 3. The final game of the Greek trilogy that sees Kratos climbing Mount Olympus to rip the heart out of Zeus while apologizing profusely to a young girl he just met for missing her softball game. God of War 3's attempts to make Kratos a dad are sloppy at best and undermine the plot the rest of the time. It attempts to place Kratos on a path of redemption by giving him a young looking girl to dote on, but their every interaction is a child's idea of what being a father is. Beating up all the other dads and buying his daughter a PlayStation, then telling her how proud he is of her C report card. It was so underwhelming that they had to make the fourth game the actual redemption saga and completely overhaul Kratos' approach to parenting. Despite the messiness of the plot, God of War 3 is a great game, but that's all due to the combat and puzzle design. I don't have a lot of strong complaints when it comes to the gameplay. Other than by the third game, it was clear they had taken the concept as far as it could go. The only thing that mars an otherwise solid 8 hour blood sauna is Kratos suddenly developing the maternal instincts of a hen that will raise any egg you hatch under him, even if right in the middle of a world ending battle between gods. In a series that has treated Greek mythology like a metal album cover that constantly gives a player the ultimate power fantasy dopamine trip, quoting Plato on power corrupting at the beginning, is on the same level of a fan fiction writer realizing his 30 chapter sonic and robotic romance needs an intelligent theme and begins it by quoting Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. Do you really think the lesson of power corrupting a man is going to stick when I'm killing gods, destroying the world without a care, and sleeping with Aphrodite? No amount of quotes is going to make Kratos look like he's doing this for anyone but himself. And the game even undermines the premise that power corrupts the gods when it reveals that they were actually possessed by the evils that Kratos freed back in the first game. God of War 3 picks up immediately after the end of God of War 2, with Kratos, gaming's most vitamin D deficient hero, having traveled through time to save the Titans by bringing them to the present to assault Olympus with him, transporting an army of Titans from the past should have created a lot of unresolvable time paradoxes. But the game simply ignores that because there are not many good ways of rectifying a breach in causality. Kratos is set on avenging himself on Zeus, who killed Kratos at the start of God of War 2, largely because Kratos was being a bit of a dick. Kratos had previously killed Ares for his own personal reasons, but also because the gods ordered him to, since Ares was assaulting human cities the gods were rather fond of due to all the nice statues of them they made. So once Kratos became the new God of War, he started doing the exact same thing Ares had been doing, and was then totally surprised when the gods put a hit on him as well. I personally never understood why Zeus killing him pissed Kratos off so much that he'd spend two games trying to kill one person. After all, he was dead for less than a minute, and then he climbed his way out of the underworld and decided he needed a summer project it seems. It wasn't even the first time the guy died, since that happened in God of War 1 and he escaped from the underworld nearly as easily. It's the equivalent of a long revenge plot set up by someone being cut off in traffic or another mild inconvenience. Regardless of how uncompelling Kratos' revenge is, he screams really well about it, so at least you believe he's passionate about what he does. Kratos only brought the Titans with him, but Olympus is also under attack by a horde of monsters who kill all the people they come across. I never figured out where those monsters came from, since I would assume the home of the gods isn't normally overrun with monsters out of Greek mythology. <laughs> Wilhelmus Screamicus just went on a trip to the underworld. Yeah, I know that fake name is based on Latin, not Greek. I couldn't make it sound Greek and understandable at the same time. Now, on this day, that power is to be tested, the mortal Kratos. Oh. Is Kratos mortal now? The series can never make up its mind on that matter, since he's a god again come the next game. Put aside the petty grievances that have splintered us for so long. We will unite. We will stand together. And I will wipe out this plague! We will unite. We will put aside our differences. We will stand together and face Kratos one by one. What? 
All of the gods jump into action against Kratos, but the only one who does anything in this initial assault is Poseidon. I suppose Hades was jumping back down to the underworld in case Kratos ended up there again, which seems a bit presumptuous, since the goal is to kill him first to end the assault and then he would end up in the underworld. I may just stick this god-killing sword into Gaia's climbing arm like I'm not gonna need it in a few minutes. I'm not one of those people that fixate on whether the new God of War gameplay is better or worse than the traditional style. I happen to think they're both done exceedingly well, but I can't understand why they switch things up so much for the fourth game. Seeing as they had already done all they could with a swinging chain attack that covers 80% of the field so you can't possibly miss, while ignoring all the other weapons you have, since they're all highly specific variants of the Blades of Chaos that fit only niche situations, and with all the violence brought to a finish by a stylish quick time event, I will take a sin off because goddamn does this series know how to make a tutorial that feels like the finale of most games. I recall killing a god used to take something special, the power from inside Pandora's box or the Blade of Olympus, not just kicking a god's face against a rock then snapping his neck. What more will you destroy? The hands of death could not defeat me. The sisters of fate could not hold me. Kratos makes a really good point. Zeus wants to kill Kratos, but it's been established that killing Kratos just makes him angrier, and he comes right back from the underworld. That's what set this chain of events off in the first place. What would killing him even accomplish if he's just going to climb out of the underworld again like the last two times? Kratos has Icarus's wings that let him glide and fly around. Gaia being unable to hold on shouldn't be a problem, but he forgets about those here. Kratos dies again after Gaia betrays him and falls into the underworld. I'm sure this time dying will have a permanent effect on the guy. Athena. I have missed you, Spartan. It wasn't that long ago that Athena last saw Kratos when he accidentally impaled her on the Blade of Olympus. As we speak, the war for Olympus rages on and mankind suffers. So let's make them suffer even more by killing more gods, because you sort of flooded the world after killing Poseidon. The death of Zeus is all that matters. Zeus will not fall as easily as Ares. To destroy the king of the gods, you must seek the source of his strength, the flame of Olympus. Are you sure about that? Because Kratos was about to kill Zeus in the previous game until you interfered. What's this about needing the Flame of Olympus? He still has the Blade of Olympus, which can also kill gods. And he just snapped Poseidon's neck, which seemed to work just fine. You once sacrificed yourself to save Zeus, and now you seek to destroy him? What has brought about this change? A couple years of development since the second game and a new writer. But thank you for asking. These are the Blades of Exile. They're exactly the same as the last two sets of blades you've used, except they have a different name each time for no good reason other than to explain why you've lost all the upgrades from the previous game. Remember, as long as Zeus reigns, there is no hope for mankind. Do you want to expand on that no hope for mankind bit? Because mankind seemed to be doing just fine with Zeus and the gods until now. Killing the gods makes things a whole lot worse for humanity. They even show horror and loss over the destruction of the world caused by Kratos. Father? Calliope? Oh. You are not my daughter. Without waiting even a second to develop any subtlety or organic relationship, both Pandora and Kratos mistake each other for their respective father and daughter upon meeting. Now I'm not a dad, but generally they don't mistake other children for their own. And doing so after you spend the last several years self-agonizing over killing her with your own hands doesn't help your case. Play the toys, Kratos. Show yourself, Hades. Another one of your tricks. It would actually make a lot of sense if Hades were to use the souls of Kratos' family against him. He is the one to do it as the Lord of the Underworld. I seek the flame of Olympus. Do you know of it? Kratos spent a good amount of time on Olympus as the god of war. So how is it he's never heard of this flame of Olympus before? And seems to know nothing about the place he used to live in. Neither god nor man can touch its lethal flame. I only need to find it. Don't you feel like you're looking for something and you don't even know what you're supposed to do with it if that's your answer? You're clearly going to have to do something with it after you find it. It is good you're not afraid, child. Fear is a heavy burden. I'm not a child, Kratos. Excellent point. Pandora is much, much older than Kratos, having been created by Hephaestus shortly after the war with the Titans. But that won't stop the weird father-daughter relationship from forming between them. Hades made this elaborate statue and pulley system just so his dead wife Persephone, who Kratos killed in a handheld game, can be used as a battering ram on the statue which contains an entire chamber itself where Hades hangs out. 
I'm going to be taking Sins off for boss fights here and there because the game does do a damn good job with them. I mean, you have to cut chunks off Hades and then destroy the chunks as they try to crawl back to him before ending with a violent tug of war over a chasm with Hades' own soul. There's good reason why God of War clones were a thing for a number of years. The day you killed Ares was the day my world was torn from me. That day, Zeus became the fiend you now know. Worst of all, he took my beloved daughter, Pandora. It was the gods who ordered Kratos to stop Ares by using Pandora's box. Why would following their orders lead Zeus to punish Hephaestus and not Kratos? Zeus even made Kratos the new god of war after that. Spend my time here trying to recreate her. I fail again and again. She still lives, Spartan. I can feel it. I wonder why Pandora never speaks to you through these statues like she does with Kratos. Quickly! You must help me! What exactly was Kratos supposed to help you with anyway? Carry you? But I must face Zeus. The Titans must take down Olympus. No! This is my war, not yours! If that's the case, you're going to have to explain why you went to the past to bring them back to fight alongside you. Feel the power of the sun! The Wrath of the Sun isn't much more impressive than a defective Samsung phone. Kratos can beat him just by holding his hand up. Helios is lucky he died before sunglasses were ever invented. A coward's words, Kratos. You don't try to catch me because you know you can't. Has anyone else noticed that speedsters are always depicted like this? Hermes is not only channeling the Flash's power, but the real-world personality of the Flash's actor. Zeus understood that the evils born from that battle, if left free, would destroy the world of man and gods. To contain these evils, Zeus commissioned Hephaestus to build a vessel strong enough to hold them. Fear. Greed. Hate. He locked them all away in the box in hopes that they would never again infect his reign. When you opened the box to kill Ares, you drew from the forbidden powers. So if Zeus contained all the evils created by that battle inside Pandora's box, why were Zeus and the rest of the gods okay with Kratos opening it back in the first game to defeat Ares? Zeus even helped Kratos escape from the underworld so he could back then. The flame is deadly. How can I recover the box? With its namesake, Kratos. Pandora? This game only exists because Athena got in the way and stopped Kratos from killing Zeus at the end of the second game. Whatever is inside the box, he clearly doesn't need it anymore. You've been lucky in battle, Spartan, but your luck ends today. Hermes, the god of parkour. When a god dies, the part of the world they govern goes off the rails. The seas rose after Poseidon died. The sun is obscured after Helios. Harpies are freed from the underworld after Hades. And now a plague after Hermes. But I don't recall anything like that happening after Kratos killed Ares in the first game or Athena in the second. There wasn't suddenly less or more war. You could argue that Athena's death in the second game resulted in a drop in intelligence that led to how stupid everyone seems in this one. Using the PlayStation face buttons as Greek letters works for all but one of them. They had to really stretch to make Pi look like a square. Bravo! Our hero has arrived. Applause for another bastard child of Zeus. I low-key love the depiction of Hera as a drunk wine mom. Hello. Despite casting Kevin Sorbo as Hercules, I was honestly let down by just how little he's used. I was expecting the most well-known hero in Greek myth to have a much bigger part in the series, but he's just another boss fight to get a weapon and then he's dead. And then you had the fact that Kratos already killed his other brother in one of the handheld games, where it was a much bigger ordeal. So this moment was largely robbed of any impact. Think about it, brother. While I was stuck cleaning the Augean stables, he chose you to destroy Ares. I'm not convinced. How about this? While you were being crowned the god of war, I was sent to find an apple. <laughs> they called them labors. Ha! Perhaps he did allow me to kill the Nemean lion, but he made your name known amongst the people. This explanation expects people to forget everything they know about Greek mythology, which begins and ends for most people with Hercules. Wears armor, Kratos has to rip off, then puts on more armor. 
Tell me exactly how you're gripping the ledge when your hands are inside the Nemean Cystus. Hercules is tall, but he would need telekinesis to keep this slab held in the air that far above him. Killing someone to solve a puzzle in the series is pretty common, but normally it was designed in such a way that there was no other way to go about doing it. Here, Kratos drags Poseidon's princess through several rooms. Also, he can have her stand beneath the wheel and keep her from spinning to keep a gate open for him. He could have used anything, like the fire brazier right next to the wheel, placed between the spokes for the same damn purpose. And he killed her just so he could speak to Pandora through another one of her statues. It's a weird tone the game strikes. When confronted by gods, the game likes to give Kratos enough cause for killing them. But here was an actual sex slave chained up in Poseidon's bedroom, who begged for her life in fear. I hear something. He's close. Just tell me how to find you. The labyrinth. Find the labyrinth. Ah! Help! Help, Kratos! Pandora! Pandora, what's happened? Where are you? This is where Kratos starts going into dad mode for no real reason. Keep in mind he just squished a lady and knows that he needs Pandora to sacrifice herself to open the way to the box, but decides to play dad and form a connection with her to make doing so that much harder for him. Do you know how long it's been since a real man has come into my chambers? Those bridges outside are nearly destroyed. Zeus refuses to have that stupid mortal Daedalus stop working on his precious labyrinth to fix them. I'm not sure if it was intentional or not, but Kratos' interaction with Aphrodite is similar to porn scenarios where the repairman shows up, since the first thing she does is complain about her broken bridge outside before banging him. Now, I ask you again, Kratos. Will you stay? I know it was pretty common in Greek mythology, but Kratos being Zeus's son and Aphrodite Zeus's sister means this is some straight up incest without the word step bro being thrown around to make it more palatable. I have done you no wrong, Hephaestus. You just cocked him by sleeping with his wife who's also your aunt and you're sort of stealing his daughter from him. When Zeus came to take the box, I hid Pandora away. I told him that storing the box on the back of Kronos would be the safest place. After all, who could best the Titan? I lied. I did it to save my child. Surely you can understand that. It was your triumph using the box that revealed my deceit. How did Kratos opening the box reveal Hephaestus' lie? There was nothing keeping the box closed. Of course he could open it. And Zeus actually helped Kratos do that. He disguised himself as a gravedigger and dug Kratos' grave so Kratos could escape from the underworld later. We'll need the Omphala stone. With it, I'll make you a weapon. I have weapons. Ah, but not like this. This weapon will give you the retribution you so rightly deserve. The stone rests in the pit of Tartarus. Hephaestus really needs to stop using Kronos and his lies. The first time got him disfigured by Zeus, and this time it gets him killed. The murderer of Gaia enters my tomb. Kronos! I know it was you who killed her, Spartan. Who else could? Zeus? Several other gods? You know, she was beaten a long time ago by them, which only makes this weirder. Kronos is upset by the apparent death of Gaia, whom he knew to have died a long time ago fighting the gods. The Gaia Kratos knocked off a cliff earlier was the one he brought from the past. Just how does Kronos have that kind of insight to know that his wife who's been dead for eons was brought to the present through time travel and supposedly killed again, but then somehow get her being dead again completely wrong? Because she isn't, she's still alive. This is the equivalent of a grain of rice beating you up. I don't really consider this a boss fight, since you're really just traversing the level that is his body, but it is a pretty badass spectacle. You ate your own children. After killing Hephaestus, nothing happens. Unlike the other gods, his death doesn't cause the world to go haywire. You think this garden is not protected? Your brute strength may have bested Hercules, but your simple mind will never find a way out. Except that you threw your wine goblet away a minute ago, which contains the gem for getting through your garden. Why would you stick that gem in a wine goblet anyway? Hera's garden is a pretty good puzzle, using impossible geometry inspired by MC Escher a few millennia before he ever existed to create it. But I have to wonder how from Kratos' point of view he could ever solve it or make sense of any of it, because this only works from a third person perspective. Good luck with that little whore you call Pandora. <laughs> 
Kratos gets so mad at Hera insulting Pandora that he snaps her neck. I remind you, Pandora's a girl he's never met face to face and knows nothing about other than that he has to sacrifice her to get a Pandora's box. The king of the gods has forsaken me. He said that if I built the labyrinth, I would see the return of my son. Zeus once made the mistake of securing Pandora's box on the back of Kronos. And to secure Pandora's box this time, he hid the key, Pandora, away inside the labyrinth. It's the same thing he did the last time, only this time he locked the key away instead of the box. He, he told me to never talk to you again. He told me if I did, he would hurt you the way he hurt my father. Is that the threat Zeus used to make you stop contacting Kratos? Well, you'll be happy to know that you're hugging the man who killed your father. He told me he would kill you. He can't. He kind of already did. I will raise the labyrinth. I will take her where she belongs. Couldn't you just carry Pandora on your back up there instead of raising the whole labyrinth by hand? There it is. I can see it, Kratos. In the darkness, the fires of hope will set us free. Pandora, no! You know why I'm here. You brought me here to do this. I will find another way. Would that way be killing Zeus like you've killed every other god today? Release the girl, Zeus! Don't confuse this object, this construction of Hephaestus with your own flesh and blood. Zeus is spitting facts right now. Put her down! As you wish. Normally when the villain answers that request, he throws the victim to their death. Here Zeus throws Pandora to a platform where she's safe for the time being. How nice of him. This is the climax of the fight between Zeus and Kratos that we already had in God of War 2. So how about this time we play Super Smash Brothers for the first part of it. Power to kill a god. Bruh, you've killed six gods just getting to this point. After all you have sacrificed, it ends in another stunning failure. I assume someone had to put the lid back on it after Kratos opened it back in the first game. So Zeus had to know the box was empty all along. Why place the box in the flame of Olympus to stop anyone from opening it ever again, if it was pointless? My world, it bleeds because of you. Gaia wanted to kill the gods as well. That was going to happen regardless of who killed them. Your pawn has failed you, Gaia. Perhaps you should have chosen the other one. Referencing a handheld game. So this sword was important in killing gods after all. Athena's got some explaining to do. Hope is what makes us strong. It is why we are here. It is what we fight with when all else is lost. Turns out hope is all you need to actually kill a god. Was hope what made Kratos grow to the size of a building to kill Ares? Because that is what the game is implying. Extreme violence is also good for killing a god. In hindsight, seeing just how bad he messed up Greece, no wonder Kratos fucked off to Norway. When Zeus gathered all the evils and placed them in the box, I dreaded what would happen if it was opened again. And so, I summoned the most powerful weapon in the world, and I placed it in the box. Athena was worried that if the box was ever open, the world would not withstand the evils within it. So she summoned the most powerful force in the world, Hope and place it inside the box. Now she wants the power back from Kratos for reasons. The only thing it's good for is killing gods, and there aren't too many of those left to oppose her. That is why you should give me the power. I understand its true meaning and where it belongs. I trust you to do the right thing, Kratos. So has killing the gods, reclaiming her power, and ruling over the world been Athena's plan all along? Or only after she died? Because I can't see that bit with her sacrificing her life to save Zeus as having been a part of it, since it kept Zeus alive for a bit longer for no gain and got her killed. Kratos kills himself to release hope back into the world. On top of developing the maternal nature of a childless 45-year-old woman, Kratos also grew an altruistic streak that sees him giving hope to all the people left alive in the world he just destroyed. Except Kratos doesn't die because he survives running himself through with a god-killing sword. I mean, you can actually see through the guy. Boy, this way, boy. Slow down, boy. We do what we please, boy. 